We are safe, finally able to connect to Starlink. The damage here is catastrophic. I wouldn't wish yesterday on my worst enemy. Some of the scariest moments of my life. That is from a survivor of Melissa in Jamaica. So for anyone saying that this storm wasn't bad and isn't bad in Jamaica, it is quite bad. The worst of people's lives. Here is where it is right now, moving over Cuba, about to reemerge and get out into the Atlantic. But first it has to go over the Bahamas. You see it here, the swirl going on. It has lost that classic eye that you'd have with a major hurricane because of the mountainous terrain that it has been over. Land is the killer for hurricanes. Water is the fuel for it. Warm water especially. It has to be warm. It has to be 80 plus uh, to get a hurricane to actually keep its strength, right, and to form. Now here is Jamaica where the storm has cleared right now. And there is the storm on the satellite picture pushing towards the north. Let's look at this storm now in more detail. Not a storm caused by climate change, a storm that all hurricanes are the natural job of a hurricane from Mother Nature is to take a hurricane, the latent heat from the equator, and pull it to the north. In this case, North Hemisphere, so the North Pole. And here is what Melissa has done and what it will continue to do. Here is the track of Melissa going back out days and weeks here. So there is the track coming all the way here, that southern track north of South America. And then there it is. It just stops. It goes back, comes back in the Caribbean, and then it starts to head north. Once the trough to the west beat down that ridge and gave it that escape route to the north. And here is the track now away from the United States. Okay, But it will siphon some moisture and pull it into the northeast tonight into tomorrow's here. So let's get the latest details on why this storm was so powerful and is still powerful, but why it got to category five is because of the bath water in the Caribbean. So you can go back here, sea surface temperature, okay? This is the temperature in the Atlantic basin we're looking at right now for the most part, the Atlantic, okay? And here it is, the temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. That is bath water in the Caribbean before Melissa got there, before that cluster of thunderstorms got into the Caribbean. The water there was so warm, the fuel, the engine for the storm was sitting there waiting for it, basically. And once those thunderstorms, once that low pressure system got there and started spinning in the Caribbean, you got to that 30 degree bath water for Celsius temperature. It just sat there and it was just feeding off of that storm and off of that very warm engine or the ocean temperature, the sea surface temperature, and that's where it got the fuel. So. You go back to Hurricane Melissa, the pressure dropped to 892 officially, okay? And hurricanes, tropical systems, are measured by pressure to see how strong they can get, okay? The lower the pressure, stronger the hurricane. So the people that have been through uh, Jamaica and Gilbert, okay, and also Wilma back in 2005 that put a, a tree through my dad's house in South Florida, okay, those are the storms that got to 882 in 888. That's the only ones that are stronger. This ties the Florida Keys hurricane of 1935, okay, for the lowest pressure. Now, damage is how you measure a storm, okay, after for, for category, but also by pressure, storms are measured that way too. And here is the forecast, taking it up towards the northeast, right here, over Cuba, over the Bahamas, uh, west of Bermuda on the western side, which wouldn't be great. But if it can miss by a few miles, remember, Bermuda is very small and that island has been hit by a lot of storms. But it's like trying to hit a needle in a haystack or fine needle in a haystack. Bermuda is so small. That's the advantage Bermuda has with tropical systems. Yes, there are some good structures there from what I've seen. Never been to Bermuda, been to Jamaica. But the structures there can withstand a lot. But it does also, if a hurricane is trying to hit Bermuda, it's a very small target. So that's the good news for Bermuda, especially if it does get pulled by the trough and goes a bit to the west here. So here is a look at the radar system right now across the country. And you have your upper level low that is spinning across uh, basically the deep south, the mid south, okay, and down here, Tennessee, Kentucky. Here's your upper level low. That's the spin right now. That is going to pick up some of the moisture and bring it up towards the north. That's why you see all of these popping up right here. These are all these gale watches and warnings going on from Maine all the way down 
uh, to Florida, really. You've got a small craft down in Florida, but generally a lot of gale warnings popping up because Melissa is going to pass between Bermuda, okay, split the goalpost between Bermuda over towards the west, and it's going to miss the east coast, okay? So it's not going to hit the east coast, but it will pull the moisture here up into New England, places that need it because of the drought. So you see that here, all this moisture is coming up. You have your upper level low, that's your engine for the storm in the northeast, and it's going to pull some moisture from Melissa into the northeast tonight and tomorrow, and then it's going to allow the escape of Melissa towards the north and east. So the forecast in the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, and New England shows that rain coming in tonight. Here it is, State College, Pittsburgh, up towards New York. You see all this moisture coming in from the south and the west. Uh, into Portland, Bangor, Eastport. Okay, here's your upper level low with the wraparound snow going on on the northwest side as that system pulls to the north and the east. And that's going to be happening tonight into tomorrow and clearing out for trick-or-treating, okay? For trick-or-treating right now, looks to be all clear, especially southwest of Canada, really. I, think, I really think that this storm is going to pull north and east quickly Thursday into Friday. So there it is on the satellite picture. You can clearly see where Melissa is right here. Temperatures there in the 80s still. And then here is your big upper level low over the southeast. That's going to pull some of this moisture to the north and the west. Okay, not all of it. You won't get a hurricane in the northeast. It's been a long time since that happened. And here's your front that's coming down here through the Gulf uh, and it will continue to pull that moisture. That's the upper level low right there. But really the engine driving the rain in the mid-Atlantic in the northeast is this upper level low right here. Okay, here's Melissa coming over the Bahamas. This is later Wednesday, okay? Storm gets picked up by the jet stream a bit. Here's Bermuda. Okay, it splits the goalpost, goes a little bit west. Now the moisture goes more towards the north and west, but Melissa's just going to head this way. I'll put the map into motion now so you can really see, watch here, watch the storm, watch Melissa, gets pulled up here, gets connected with the trough, okay? And then there is Melissa, here's Bermuda, here's the upper level low, okay? And then on the weather highway, it just pulls it enough north. Remember, say it again, the job of a tropical system is to take the latent heat up towards the pole from the equator. That's the job. That's what these systems want to do. They want to go north or in the southern hemisphere. They want to go south. That's where they want to go, okay? That's their natural job. That's their natural tendency. It's like a humans, we want to take the path of least resistance. We want to do the easiest thing. We don't we have to choose the hard path in life. This system, by Mother Nature standards, is doesn't have a brain, obviously, but it's trying to, you know, it's trying to, by nature standards, it's built to take the path of least resistance. That's what we are naturally built to do as humans. This is what this storm wants to do. It wants to take that path of least resistance, but it does need a little bit of help. So the trough is going to help do that as it pulls it up towards the north. And then by then, Thursday, Friday, Halloween, it's gone. And you have your upper level low spinning over New England with some wraparound snow in the mountains, and then it's over. So I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Uh, consider following on Facebook. I appreciate you being here. Have a great rest of your day.